Okay, so let's talk about, um, here's the two, pardon me, I'll back up a little bit. Did you guys want to sit down? You're okay? All right. We've got one chair up here. Okay. All right, here's the ugliest moment of the presentation. These are two jargon pieces you've got to have. It's not my, it's not me, it's them. The first one is called the, prime, the personal insured amount also known as the PIA. Have any of you heard of that thing? Okay, well you're gonna. <coughs> Personal insured amount. Yeah, absolutely. Sounds like I'm an insurance policy, Neil. Yeah, you are. The government views you as that and they're gonna pay you as long as you're breathing. Okay? The other one is FRA, full retirement age. FRA, have any of you heard of that thing? How about just full retirement age? You Surely some of you have heard that. What's that thing saying? It's saying when in their eyes you, you, you are entitled to your full personal insured amount. So those two things are going to form a nexus and that's going to be how much they're, they pay you every month you're breathing. So we need to get, we need to get comfortable with these two, two jargon pieces. Okay, um, Let's start with the the personal insured amount. This is a social security earnings record for a primary worker. Have any of you guys seen this? A lot of you. Okay, great. This is being done um, by the Social Security Administration on your behalf. They're recording your earnings and the amount that were paid in to, to you, sorry, for you or by you on your behalf over the years. Um, something magical in Social Security happens when you turn 60. Now you may be having a birthday party that night. Hopefully you have some friends, pizza, maybe some beer, I don't know, fill in the blanks. But they are doing something very different. That day they are creating your Social Security benefit. They are creating your personal insured amount. That day. Now if you're sitting there going, wait a minute, I'm still working. Or I'm making a lot of money in my 60s. Good, good for you. That's great. They already made your number. Okay. So they make that number. How do they do that? They take your 35 best years of earnings and they throw the others out. They keep your 35 best and they crush them in a formula that would take me two screens to show you. And it spits out that personal insured amount. And they're going to pay that to you based on, they're going to pay you a percent of that based on when you draw, okay? Now, if you're sitting there going, well, wait a minute, I'm still working, I thought. Do, does, does my benefit get bigger? A little bit, not much. Hear me loud and clear. If you think you're working a lot in your 60s to make that thing big, you're dreaming. Hmm. You're California dreaming, <laughs> okay? It's been, the cake's been baked when you hit 60. It was baked. Mm. Now they're gonna add some icing to it, in your 60s, if you keep working, that's great. But I, I, right in there, I, I think we're cutting through some BS. You're thinking, oh, they take my three highest years. Remember that that thought? Mm -hmm. I don't know who threw that idea out. It's complete garbage. They make your benefit when you turn 60, and then it can get a little bit bigger. Now, the other the other thing that's done is your full retirement age is given to you based on the year your mom and daddy spit you out of the world, okay? Was anybody born between 43 and 54? Okay, great, yeah? Your full retirement age is 66, okay? You guys probably knew that. Anybody born at 55? Great, we got one representative. Your full retirement age is 66 too. Now if you're sitting there going, Neil, why do I need to know this? Full. Do you guys want a partial benefit? What do you want? Full. They'll give you your full if you wait to this age I'm talking about. Full retirement benefits paid if you wait to draw your benefit to this age. Who was born in 56? Okay, okay great. Uh, 66, four is yours, okay? 66, four months. Who thinks up these two month intervals? <laughs> Ooh, the dreaded 1957, anybody? Ooh, 
You guys see that number? I can't help you. Okay, 1958. Okay, 66, eight. 1959, 66.10. How about 1960 or later? Okay, we're, we're easy. We're all age 67. That, if we wait to draw our benefit to those points in our life, we get our full retirement benefit. Pretty cool, all right? So, how does this all come together? What happens is when you turn 62, the till at Social Security will open, and you're eligible to draw a benefit. And that till is an eight-year window of time, starting at your age 60 through 62 through your, your age 70. Based on the attained age that you draw your benefit, you're going to get a percent of that personal insured amount. So, I turn 62. I want to get paid. Can I? Absolutely, I can. And I can go to the till, and they're going to pay me, what is that number? That number is a percent of my personal insured amount. I get 75% of what? Of the, of the PIA. 35 best years. Mm -hmm. But only 75% of it. What happens to that other 25%? You lose it. They get it. We all get it. Okay. All right. So I asked earlier, why are why are we not getting our full benefit? I think you, you didn't you say it's, we're taking it too early. Okay. Okay, that's a reason why right here. Now every year I wait, it gets bigger, right? If I if I wait all the way, let's say I'm six. I was my full retirement age is sixty six. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. If I wait till sixty six and I go to the till, what do I get? I get full. Cool, great, awesome. Well, let's say I get there and I don't even need it for whatever reason. Maybe the house is paid off, kids gone, we're not spending that much. Maybe we have a pension, I don't know, the IRA. Do I have to take it at my full? No. In fact, not only do you not have to take it, they're gonna incent you to not take it. They're gonna grow your benefit by 8% a year if you don't draw it. They're paying you to not take it, and they're paying you 8% a year. Delayed retirement credit, delayed gratification. Okay, now guys, see this? See, see those numbers, the red, 108, 116? What are those numbers saying? They're saying that they're gonna pay me if I wait that percent of what they would have paid me at my full. So if I go to 70 and I don't take it, what am I gonna get? 132% of what? Of what that full number would have been. So that's a third more. If I was going to get 2000 a month at my full, now what am I going to get? 3000 a month. How long do I get that? As long as I'm breathing. What if I hit 108 and I'm the oldest human on the earth? First off, I'm going to be on Good Morning America. <laughs> but what are they going to do? They keep paying me. Okay. Can you, would you guys agree with me that there's a great variance between drawing at 62 and drawing at 70? Yes. Okay. That's the nature of the decision right there, guys. Is do we do it now or do we wait? Now, I get this question all the time. Neil, this looks pretty obvious. I should wait, right? I don't know. I don't know your situation. What I will say is, in my opinion, there's never a bad time to take it. I mean, you worked your whole life. If you need it, take it. The question is, do you really need it? The question is, maybe do you have other assets we could draw and fill and let that cook? That's the question. Is 8% a pretty good guarantee? That's a guaranteed number. Is that a pretty good guaranteed rate of return? Yeah. What do you guys think? Yeah. How many of you are earning a guaranteed 5% tonight somewhere? Okay, good. How about 6 Ooh, no hands. Guaranteed six. How about guaranteed seven? None? How about a guaranteed eight? Okay. Kim, the lady that greeted you and threatened to tackle you, <laughs> she's a, uh, she has a, a Series 65 license. That's the highest license you can hold in personal finance. She's a fiduciary, all that stuff. She can't get you a guaranteed six. 
8%. Sounds like I'm telling you to wait, right? I don't know. I'm just telling you that's one hell of a guaranteed number. And you may want to think about it before you turn it on. Okay? All right. Let's keep going. Um, well, I guess the next thing is you're sitting there going, well, what if there's two of us? Who takes it when? Right? So what we've covered tonight is the fundamentals, 85, 90%. We've covered it. Is that window of time, your full benefit, and which classification you are, and then it's how do we choose, right? Okay, that's that's what we're gonna we're gonna finish with that. But but okay, that that that's a good chunk of it. A couple couple other things here. Let's talk about another classification spouse. I mentioned if you were stay home mom, stay home dad, you're still married, you can get a benefit. You can heck, get this, you can get up to half of what your primary working spouse gets. Pretty cool. I know we had a hand there, right? So John had a, a worked hard. He has a nice benefit of two thousand dollars a month at his full. We'll say sixty-six. His spouse is entitled if she waits to turn it on to her full to up to half of that. So she gets a thousand dollars, but she never even had a, a worker's record. Pretty cool. Also, a spousal top off. Maybe Jane did work, and her benefit's only five hundred a month. We can get her a top off up to half of his. So she gets two things, her own and spousal. That may be several of you, so I want you to circle that. You might want to come see me after. Um, now, spousal benefits, just so you know, uh, they have the same eight-year window, but there's a different early withdrawal withholding. It's more severe. If you go at 62 to get your benefit as a spouse, you the early withdrawal, you only get 70% of the 100. So it's lower. And then there's no delayed retirement. There's no 8% delayed retirement credit. So a spousal benefit, we're never going to want to wait beyond 66. There's no reason. Oh, by the way, it's 70. <coughs> if you haven't, is it possible you could not draw your benefit? I mean, do you ever have to call in? No. No? Huh? And when you turn seven, are they going to call you and say, hey, you didn't turn it on? No, they're not. They're not mean. They got 10,000 other people in the queue. You got to do it. Never let it go beyond 70, ever. It never grows one more penny. It's done. It's done growing. Get it out of the oven. Don't really have time for questions. I apologize, but I, I'm staying after. Okay. All right. Let's talk about considerations for the divorce. Now, what do you know? You got two guys playing golf all week. I wonder why they got a divorce. <laughs> Somebody said once, well, at least they're happy. <laughs> they're smiling. No. Um, okay. A couple things, guys. If you were married 10 years consecutive and you're, you got a divorce, they still think you're a spouse. They being Social Security. Yeah, but Neil, I got remarried. Yeah, but they still think you're a spouse as well. They think you're two. Yeah. Um, so interestingly, you're going to be eligible for it's as if you're still married. Okay. So if you're married 10 years and you stay single and you, you hit the eight year window and I see this all the time, someone will go, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to draw my bed. I'm 64. I'm going to get 80%. Of it. Okay. It's fine. Were you married? Yeah. Who made more of they made a lot more than me. Okay. We need to look into your spousal top off. There's free money there. And here's the thing. A lot of us are thinking, oh, well, Neil, I, I, there's a reason we got a divorce. I don't want to deal with that knucklehead. Um, but the truth is we're able to get you the benefit. They don't even know about it. It doesn't hurt them at all. They don't lose anything. You get, though. So uh, we want to make sure you're not leaving money behind. Now, what if you got remarried? Okay, well, when you get remarried, that's fine. You're now attached to, to your spouse. If you got married after age 60, however, so let's say you got married 61, 62, 65, age 70, whatever, you are attached to your new spouse, but that previous one is in place still. So if, you're, if you survive your current spouse, we're going to be able to choose the better survivor benefit. 
Okay. How do you like that? Well, two would be better. <laughs> what I said. Well, yeah, I, I did this walk down the aisle a few times. <clears throat> Great. They don't care how many times you did it. However number of 10 years or more you have, we get to work from. So, just, just, but if you're thinking that's not possible, believe me, it is. So, all right, so just be aware of that. Okay, now here's survivor benefit. When one of you survives your spouse, you're gonna be entitled to survivor benefit. And notice I didn't say if, right? Let's don't, let's get real here. When you survive your spouse, you're going to be eligible for a survivor benefit. So you, I want you to start thinking about this. If you hit age 60, you're able to get the benefit. Um, now, one of the kind of amazing things about being a survivor is they're gonna allow you to switch between your record and your spouse's. Okay, it's a pretty amazing option. Um, it's called switch over and you know, you're, we're not there yet. I know, I know we had one widow in the room, right? See me after, for sure, if you have time. I want to make sure you're aware of this. But uh, it's, it's, a, it, it's really a, a powerful benefit. <clears throat> to make a long story short, you'd be able to, for example, if your benefit was not as strong as your spouse's, you could turn yours on and let your spouse's grow, and we could switch over in the future. I'll show you that in a little bit but it's a pretty big deal. Okay, a couple more things and then we're gonna start talking about coordination. So, I get this question a lot, Neil, I wanna turn on my, my social security, but I wanna keep working too. Can I get both checks? The answer is maybe. If you do, if you've reached your full retirement age, the answer is yes. So if you've reached your full retirement age, Turn your benefit on and you're still working, go to town, you get both, 100%. You can make a million bucks, they don't care. You're gonna get your social security benefit. However, if you turn your benefit on prior to full retirement age, say 64, 62, fine, you can get your social, but if you start making, you're making earned income and you go above 22,000, uh, we have a problem. They're gonna start withholding that. By the time you hit 30,000 in earned income, you're not gonna get a penny from social. Is a pension considered earning income? No. No, no, no. So, can you guys see what's going on here? This is kind of a big deal. I don't want any of you turning your benefit on early and thinking you're gonna work and make good money at the same time. You're not, it's a terrible idea. What happens is, is you turn it on early, you locked in those lower amounts. How long are those amounts locked in for? Forever. And then you're working fine, but you make too much. You don't even get that. So you locked in a low amount, you're not even getting it. So don't do that. If you're thinking about working and turning it on early, I'd probably come see me tonight if you can't. Come, come, I'll be over here. So let me check my chair. And did you say rental income was not included? Correct. It's not. It, earned income is what they're what they're going to hit you. Hit you. We're going to. I'm sorry. We got to keep going. Okay. All right. So see me after if it's if it's important. Okay. So, yes, you can work and get your benefit. However, if you're doing that prior to your full retirement age, there's a good, there's a chance you're gonna not be able to keep it, the Social Security, so let's, let's watch that. A couple more things. Uh, I see this one quite a bit. Um, Kim and I see this. We'll have a couple come in the office, hey, we're all ready to retire, and I, we get that. We, we want you to. But we can have scenarios where the higher wage earner wants to file right away, early. Okay, again, we understand. The problem with that is, as you know, we're locking in a lower amount, which isn't bad. Could there be better? We would want to look. But what's for sure is, when you start retirement with both of you getting a benefit, things start out pretty good. But eventually, one of you is going to survive the other. And when that happens, one of the two checks are permanently gone. There's no carry on the checks. One's gone. Now you get to keep the higher of the two, but if you started low, right? You're married couple, you start low, and then it's up. This better be enough for them. See what I'm getting at? Be careful. We don't, 
if, so if you're a higher wage earner and you're gonna file early, let's make sure the survivor, we got a plan for them, okay? Because stuff happens. Um, and, and watch this one, the in after information from the internet. I'm sure none of you have ever Googled <laughs> when to turn on Social Security, right? Well, here's the thing. Unless the article addresses all 554 scenarios, is it going to be accurate? No. It's not. It's impossible. In fact, I caught over in Portland, they're the major media, and they read a lot of great articles. I, we read the financial articles, but the headline was, if married 10 consecutive years, ineligible for div divorce, see benefit. Is that true? Completely not true. If you are married for 10 consecutive years, you are eligible for a, a divorce benefit. You know, they publish that. I mean, that can really screw someone up. I'm not saying, they didn't do it on purpose. I know they didn't. But I mean, you just got to be careful what you read. It's probably not, not, it's not rightly dividing all the truths that apply to you. That's, that's a great way to say it. I hate to say it. Okay. So let's, we're getting down to the end, but we want to talk about coordination, okay? So, retirement income strategy, do you, what's your retirement income strategy? You don't have to answer me, just ask me. Well, Neil, I don't really have one. Okay, it's all right. It's probably a good time to really get one together. Or, Neil, I have one, but I really don't understand it. Probably need to review it. No matter what, though, the best strategies are going to start with Social Security. We want to start with that. Why? It's going to pay you as long as you live. It's treated the most favorably tax-wise. And there's a big variance in what they pay you. So let's start with it, and then we can build around it with the IRA, the 401k, the annuity, the pension, the Roth IRA, and all that good stuff, right? Does that make sense? Now. Are some of you thinking, hey, Neil, I don't even know if social's going to be around. Is that crossing anybody's mind? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me clear that up, too. So the Social Security Trust Fund meets every year. They publish a number. It's got over $2 trillion in there right now. It's in the black to the tune of $2 trillion and change. That thing is solvent through 2033. Starting in 2034, it's scheduled to run a deficit. Not to be bankrupt, the deficit. So they got to add more money to it, right? Okay, so it's not going away tomorrow. It's not going to be gone in 2034. Now, do you think they're going to add money to it? Well, have you noticed these congressmen and congress ladies, they get their job, have you noticed? They never want to leave it. Is that just me? <laughs> no. So with a third of the country voting on them funding this or not, what do you think they're going to do? They like their job. They're going to fund it. And at the very least, those you guys being on it, you're in the clear. Now, the younger groups, that's another issue. I want you to be confident on this. I don't want you being fooled by headlines on the Internet. It's funded. they got to fund, fund it more, and they're going to. That's just how it's going to go. Okay? All right, so we want to build on it with the other things. Insurance is important. We're all different. Uh, I get this question a lot. Neil, I, we've had life insurance, but, I mean, the kids are gone. The house is paid. Do I even need this? Or what's this long-term care thing? I've heard that thing's pretty brutal, right? That's a piece that we're all different. Insurance can be very important. It can be a non-issue. But in your case, you definitely don't want to overlook it. Make sure you understand what it could do for you. Then we want to have our investments, okay? Investments are our best inflation beater, okay? Why don't we build everything on investments? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> laughing. Why don't we have investments at the bottom and Social Security way up? The, why don't we do that? I guarantee they can go down in value. You want the whole pyramid to sink in a bad year? No. We want investments, but we want them in the right order, okay? All right. 